Today we're going to be covering a general overview of the TrueNAS Enterprise web interface. So first thing we will uh, familiarize ourselves with is the navigation. So all the navigation is done through the left hand side drop down menus here. Um, and on the top right hand side of the interface we have our system icons. So first one here is True Command. Um, so this allows us to see if we're connected to a True Command service. Uh, True Command is our single pane of glass management, so it allows us to manage multiple TrueNAS systems from one single web interface. Um, if you have an HA enabled system, um, you'll see an HA icon here notifying us of the HA status. Um, we also have a directory services monitor, so this will show the status of any directory services that you are attached to. Um, we have a task manager, which is going to show us any ongoing tasks such as replication, snapshots, anything like that, as well as uh, historical tasks, so things that have been completed. And then the alerts here, so the alerts are going to show us anything from informatics, such as updates are available, uh, all the way up to critical alerts such as drive failures, uh, things like that. Uh, and then settings, um, just basic settings, changing passwords, um, creating API keys, etc. Uh, and then power cycle controls here. And next we'll talk about our actual dashboard here. So the system dashboard is our, is our landing page when you connect to the TrueNAS GUI. Um, and this is basically going to provide us a system overview at a quick glance so we're able to see the status of our TrueNAS system, such as uh, if we have HA enabled, um, we can see the standby partner node here. Um, we can initiate a failover from here. We can check for updates. We can see our current version. Um, we can see our support license information, uptime, all of that is listed here. Uh, we're also able to see our CPU and memory load. Um, from a storage pool perspective, we can see how much space is available. We can see how much space is used. If there's any drive errors, those will be reported here as well. Um, and then we can also see our network interface statuses. So this is going to show us our link status as well as um, the throughput going through those links. The next thing we'll take a look at is updating TrueNAS, um, which can be accessed by simply clicking this Check for Updates button here in the dashboard. Uh, now the system is up to date, so we're not going to find any updates here. Um, but if there was an available update, this process is very simple and straightforward. You'll see it listed here. You can click the Apply Pending Update button. That will download and apply the update. Um, now, updates do require reboots, but if you have a HA system, um, basically what happens is we update the standby controller first, uh, let it reboot, and then we fail over to it, and then update the second controller. And so basically, we can get non-disruptive upgrades um, by using an HA system. Another thing to kind of talk about, and this isn't specifically related to updates, but it kind of comes down to our support model. Um, and really kind of our company motto um, is that we will never lock you out of any updates or any feature for that matter. Uh, say if your support contract ends and you don't want to renew it, or say the system is over five years old, which is our max support contract length, you still have full access to every feature, every update, including high availability. Um, we don't lock you out of any of that. And this isn't specifically related to updates, but one thing to note is that if you choose to not renew support or say that the TrueNAS system is over five years old, which is our max support contract length, we will never lock you out of any feature. We'll never lock you out of any updates. You buy it, you own it. That's really our motto. Um, and another thing is that you also have the ability to roll back updates. If there was an issue, we can easily roll back to the previous version. The next thing we're going to take a look at is the view and closure section. One thing to note is that this is an enterprise specific feature, so this is not available on core. And basically what it does is it provides us a graphical view of what the actual drive population looks like in the TrueNAS appliance. 
and this includes any expansion shelves as well. You can see on the right hand side here that I do have an expansion shelf and I can see the drives in that pool. Now all these drives are color coordinated for what particular storage pool they belong to. In our case we have two storage pools which is why we have two different colors and then unassigned drives that aren't part of any pool are just gray. And by clicking on these drives, we can get detailed information about those drives, such as their function in the pool, uh, as well as, say, their serial numbers. And probably most importantly is the Identify Drive button. Um, what this does is physically activates a blinking red light on that drive once you clicked it. So it makes a failed drive replacement extremely easy. Not only do you visually know where it is from this view, but when you go to pull it out, or say if you have remote hands pulling out drives, you are absolutely sure that you're pulling out the right drives due to that light. The other thing to note here is that with a silver or a gold support contract for the enterprise systems, it enables a feature called proactive support. And what that does is essentially allows the TrueDAS system to phone home in the event of, say, a drive failure, where we get notified as soon as the drive fails, just allows us to get a head start on the replacement. We've had multiple instances where a customer, say, has had a drive fail on Friday, they come back into the office on Monday, and there's a brand new drive on their desk, and they weren't even aware that a drive failed. Um, so we like to kind of consider that as an extension of your IT department if you enable that feature. So the next thing we'll take a look at here is the task section. So this is where all the automated jobs can be configured in TrueNAS, so things such as replication and snapshots. Um, first thing we'll talk about is replication. Uh, there is three different replication methods. Uh, first one being rsync. So if you wanted to rsync TrueNAS system to any system that supported the rsync protocol, that can be set up. Or if you wanted to ingest data over rsync, that can be set up here as well. Uh, the second form of replication is simply what we just call replication tasks. Um, but this is TrueNAS to TrueNAS replication. So this is all snapshot based. It's all done at the ZFS file system level. Um, these jobs are scheduled um, as well as you set the retention period for them. And I'll actually show you that here. So if we go to edit this, so this, this job is set up to push data. So the source is on this system and we are now going to be replicating it to a destination or partner system. Um, and in here you can define the lifetime of the snapshot replication. So I have this set to three months and then you can see here on the bottom is the schedule. So I have this set to run daily. So basically it's gonna replicate once a day at 12 a.m. and it's gonna keep those snapshots for three months. The next form of replication is the cloud sync tasks. Now, this allows us to sync to a cloud provider. Um, function similarly to how the replication tasks function. Um, this is set up on a schedule. Um, and there's different modes you can configure it in. So for example, sync, where uh, if you delete data on the TrueNAS, it also deletes it from the cloud. Uh, there's a few other modes as well, like uh, move operation, if you want to migrate data to the cloud, um, or if you want to basically copy data to the cloud, where even if you delete it on the TrueNAS, it remains in the cloud. So there's a few different options and ways this can be set up depending on what your overall uh, goal is. The next thing we'll cover is the periodic snapshot tasks. Now, these are really what set TrueNAS apart from a lot of our competitors. Because of the copy on write design of ZFS, in the case of ransomware, you can simply roll back to a prior snapshot and recover the data. Um, we actually had a few customers get infected with ransomware and within a few minutes were easily and successfully able to roll back to a snapshot from earlier that day and safely recover their data without having to pay any ransom fees. Uh, now these snapshot jobs can be set up globally so you can snapshot an entire storage pool or you can configure them on a per data set or volume basis and you're also defining the frequency of the snapshots as well as the retention period. So if I go to create a new snapshot job here, 
the setup process is fairly straightforward. We're basically selecting which particular data set or volume that we want to take snapshots of. And then we're specifying the lifetime. And again, this is basically the retention period. So how long these snapshots are going to be kept. And then you define the schedule. So for example, if I set the schedule to daily and the lifetime to two weeks, basically it's going to take one snapshot a day. Once we hit that 14th, or 14th snapshot, which would be the 14th day, the, time, the next time it goes to take a snapshot, which should be the 15th day, it will delete the oldest snapshot. So it'll always keep those 14 snapshots. So it's, it's basically self-cleaning. Another thing to note is there is really no limit on snapshot job count. Same thing goes with replication. You can have multiple snapshot jobs for the same data set. Maybe you want to have snapshots every 15 minutes and just keep those for a day. Maybe you want to take dailies and keep those for a year. You can basically set that up so you have different recovery points. Another thing is there is no snapshot count limit. So a lot of uh, storage appliances out there today have a limit, whether it's 2,000, 4,000 snapshots. Um, there is no practical limit in TrueNAS. All right, the next thing we'll cover is the storage pool section. So essentially this provides us with a single pane of glass view for everything storage. Regardless of if you're using file systems, which essentially map into shares, so NFS or SMB type shares, or if you're using volumes, which would map into iSCSI or Fiber Channel. Uh, additionally, we also have S3 uh, storage as an option, which essentially maps back down to a file system. So all of those can be managed from this view directly here. The other thing we're able to see here is obviously all of the storage statistics. So we can see how much each file system or volume is using, as well as what the available capacity on that particular volume or file system is. And the first row here is basically a global representation of that pool. So this is going to show you how much data is used in entirety of that pool and how much is available. Um, we're also able to see our compression and deduplication ratios here. Another thing to note is that file systems and volumes can both be dynamically expanded. Um, by default, when you create a file system, there's no quota assigned to it. And th so the available capacity of that file system is going to be the entire available capacity of the storage pool, as you can see here. This 32.39 is the same as the storage pool. But if you do set a quota on it, which I'll show you here really quick, if I go to the drop down menu on the right hand side here and I go to edit options, this is where we can define a quota for that particular data set, which will limit the size of it. And as far as expanding the physical storage pool, that can be done without any downtime. It's a very simple process where we just add additional drives to the system and we can come in here and we can go to this gear icon on the top right hand corner under pool operations and we can add VDEVs and basically this will present us with a list of available storage devices which then we can we can attach to the storage pool and expand our capacity. And now this does not incur any downtime. This capacity is granted basically instantaneously as well. So the next thing we'll cover on TrueNAS is the sharing portion. So this is really where we create our exports. Um, so TrueNAS is, is a unified storage solution. So it supports file block and object. So that's NFS, AFP, WebDAV, SMB, iSCSI, Fiber Channel, and S3. All of those services can be ran on a single storage pool so you don't have to have dedicated storage segments if you will for particular services um, and basically you know for nfs afp and smb really these are just simple mappings um, when we're setting up a share we're just providing the path to a particular data set that would have been created under the storage pool view um, and then there's some advanced options if you need to use them. But typically, you just assign a name, uh, select the path, and click Submit. Uh, and that'll create a new SMB share. 
Um, same thing goes for NFS. Really, the process is exactly the same, where we're just providing the path and the name. Again, there's advanced options. If we want to authorize specific hosts or networks, for example, we can we can lock those down. Um, for iSCSI, there's a couple of different ways to set this up. There's sort of the traditional manual way where we go through here. We set up our portals. Uh, we set up initiator groups, um, authorize access if we need it. Um, targets um, our extents, and our extents are effectively mappings of a raw, uh, what we call a Zvol, which is basically a volume. So this is where we basically select a volume in the pool, and then we assign the parameters to it, such as RPMs and block sizes and as well, um, and then associated targets. The other way to do this is to go through the wizard, which you could say is a bit more simple. Um, basically, it's a three-step process where we create a new volume or choose a volume. Um, we can give that volume a name, uh, and then we assign portal access to it. So which portal is it able to be discovered through? Uh, and then we can assign initiator access, otherwise leave this wide open. Um, and then by clicking submit, we've now gone through everything to allow that volume to be discoverable. The next thing we'll cover here is the directory services. So there is three different directories, directory services that TrueNest can integrate with. We have Active Directory, which the system is currently joined to. We can also join to LDAP or a NIS. Um, the joining process is very straightforward. Essentially, we're just providing the domain name as well as credentials to access that domain. And once that connection is made, TrueNAS will then map local UID and GID accounts to the actual accounts in the directory service. And so for, say, Active Directory, if you're doing Windows shares and you're going to assign ECLs, uh, you can do that all from a Windows system just as if you were running SMB on a Windows server itself. And so when you go to set those ACLs, TrueNAS will pull up all of the accounts and groups uh, from that directory service. And the same thing goes with the other directory services as well. And then for the reporting section in, in the interface here, um, so this can be broken out into specific metrics. Um, this is basically a historical view of the system. Uh, basically, when the system is deployed, it starts locking everything. Um, so this is real, pretty much near real time. It's up to the minute, but you can also zoom these out and you can see over time what the metrics have looked like. And this is really nice depending on what you're looking at. Um, for example, system load, we can see over time, has the system been getting more and more loaded? Um, we can look into, say, disk information. Um, we can select specific devices that we want to take a look at. Uh, we can, under metrics, we can select the metrics that we care about. For example, how busy are the drives and what the latency is. And again, you can kind of zoom out on these. And so over time, you can track, you know, has your workload been increasing? Are the drives getting more and more busy? And these type of metrics can just kind of help you plan for the future. You know, if we see that the drives are getting very busy or the rate of storage growth is growing rapidly, it can kind of allow you to project when you'll need to expand in terms of capacity or in terms of performance. So as far as other access to TrueNAS outside of the web interface, you do have full shell access, so you can get in via SSH. Um, we don't recommend making any modifications through SSH because those type of modifications wouldn't be tracked in the TrueNAS database, but you can leverage it for gathering metrics or um, basically doing read-only operations if you're data gathering. Um, if you do want to do administration outside of the interface, um, we do recommend using our API. Uh, we have very verbose documentation around that where it can be scripted. And really, we are an API first company. So really, every single feature, every single setting can all be done through the API. So last but not least is our documentation hub. Um, we have very, very good documentation around TrueNAS. Everything from models to upgrade processes, 
True Command. Um, Feature-wise, every single feature and setting is very well documented in here, um, showing how you can set up things, what's the best practices. Um, it's just very, very verbose in terms of everything around TrueNAS. So definitely good material to read through if you have any additional questions.